So now it'd be a very, very, for all you dopes who are questioning Steph to get out your bread, get out your fixins, and make yourself a big ass crow sando. Or if you're not hungry, just get out a big red nose and a pair of floppy shoes because he clowned the hell out of you. Because according to some of you fools, this was supposed to be the year that Steph got exposed. This was supposed to be the year that Steph aged out and was washed and was not hungry enough. And that he was just lucky a few years ago. You know, all those other idiotic takes that were flying around from people who didn't know what the hell they were talking about. And just trying to get you to look at them and react to them. And then you had this junk dad on top of it. You know, that he wasn't going to have Clay, He wasn't going to have KD. So defenses were going to key on him, shut him down, lock him up, and he would be exposed as not nearly the player he was made out to be. Well, you were right about part of that. He didn't have Clay, and he didn't have KD. And defenses did key on him. And all he did was become the second player in NBA history to win a scoring title at the age of 33. Yeah, you're right about this, too. He was exposed. He did get exposed. Exposed as one of the greatest to ever play the game. Ever. You hear me? One of the greatest players in the history of the game. That's a fact. That's beyond arguing at this point. Don't bring any of that hot take bullcrap debate around here. You can't argue that point. One of the best ever. He didn't need to win another scoring title to prove that. He didn't need to carry this Warriors team into the playoffs to validate anything. But the fact that he did both those things underlies his greatness. He is not a function of playing in a great system or being surrounded by great players. He's great, period. He's great, period. No qualification. The system does not make him great. He makes the system great. The players around him are not making him great. He's a freaking outlier. He's what makes the system great and all the guys around him better too great. So if you were one of those people who ever vomited up that garbage, doubted him before, go ahead and apologize right now because there has never been another guy like Steph Curry. And instead of trying to crack on or discredit him for any number of moronic reasons, you should be giving him credit for revolutionizing the game because he did. And he has never looked better, coming off a significant injury and at age 33. This guy played some MVP caliber ball now. Some of the best ball of his career at a time when some idiots thought the game had passed him by. All right, so let me ask you this. You got a piece in the LA Times today. You made the point that the Lakers really never had control of their season. Lay that out for me. What do you mean by that? I mean, I think, um, you know, they were a team where they kind of, they thought they'd be starting in January, late January. Um, I think, you know, after MLK Day, like a lot of NBA teams, um, and there were, this isn't to make excuses for them, but there were circumstances from that point on that kind of, never really enabled them to, to reach their full potential. And some of those circumstances were completely out of their control. Um, you know, um, organizationally speaking, at least, right? Like Anthony Davis um, starting very slowly um, after playing so well at the end of the season, you know, had a, had a real clear sort of, I think, I thought at least an MVP window this year. Um, and he wasn't up for it, um, you know, and, and obviously not even close to winning that award. Um, you know, you have kind of a free play with Solomon Hill and LeBron James. Um, you, you make that Andre Drummond trade, and, and you know, the, he's here for a day, and then and, and he loses a toenail, and then he's missing games. And Schroeder and the, the, the COVID protocols twice. It, it was, you, you know, they were always reactionary to everything. Um, and so, to me, it made perfect sense that as, you know, kind of the will they or won't they, um, in terms of them making the playing tournament, they, you know, they had nothing to do with deciding that either. Um, you know, they needed help. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see now um, as they kind of play uphill for the entirety of the playoffs so they're, if they're able to, to, to pull this off. But, um, you know, the, they, they were never really able to, to grab the season's destiny so far, kind of kind of by the horns. And, and, and this will be their, I, I guess, a chance to do it. They're, they're sort of healthy. 
Dan Wojcik is joining us. So, Dan, what do you think about that? They are sort of healthy, and they're starting to sort of gel. I hear exactly what they're saying. I'm listening to what's coming out of their mouths. But what do you think they're actually thinking? For instance, what's your sense as to how concerned they are about having to go up against Golden State in the playing game? I mean, they should be. They should have a, a healthy fear. Um, I think if they were playing Golden State in a five-game series or a seven-game series, I don't think they should be even a little bit afraid. Um, but I mean, is there, you know, not to mix sports metaphors, is there like a better, better knockout puncher in the NBA than Steph Curry? Like just a guy who could just like, I mean, he could score 60 points and I mean, that's reasonable. <laughs> you, right. you know, I, 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 it, it's not like some just like total, like, well, anything can happen 60 points. It's like, it's pretty easy to talk yourself. I mean, he just had 46, um, you, you know, in a, in a, in a win yesterday. So, um, that's scary. It, it should be scary. Now, look, um, they'll be favored. Um, they're at home. They'll be at home. Again, they, they have a little bit of a safety net, even if they lose. But, um, you know, you know, to, to me, yeah, I mean, they're frightening. I mean, really, if we're, if we're being honest, right, the only, the only other more frightening team they could probably see in the playing tournament is the Lakers, um, which is why it's kind of a fun matchup, right, is that you do have – you know, not only a, a, a healthy Lakers team, but, you know, one that should be at least moderately fresh, um, you know, after Anthony Davis and LeBron James got big chunks of time off during the regular season. Um, yeah, they don't have a lot of chemistry. Um, they certainly don't have any on-court continuity, but they've got more talent than maybe anybody else in the Western Conference. And so, I mean, they're, we, we, I mean, we saw it yesterday. It certainly seemed like a lot of teams were, were kind of, doing what they could to make sure that they would avoid the Lakers. Um, and, and so we should be cognizant of that when we talk about, you know, how afraid teams are and stuff like that, um, or how afraid the Lakers should be of the Warriors. I mean, everybody's pretty afraid of the Lakers, it seems like. But, uh, I, I mean, I don't know, standing across like Steph Curry, like that, that would make me nervous. For sure. I think you made a great point when you say, hey, look, it's not unreasonable to think this guy could get 60. That's not just something sure. you throw out there. I mean, he could get 60. I'm looking at the line right now. It's kind of curious. Lakers are minus four and a half. So let me ask you this. If you had to call your shot right now, Dan, who's coming out of the West and who's coming out of the East? Oh, my God. Um, whew. I, 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 I know. I wish I had a good answer for you. And I think that that's honestly like kind of the exciting part of this, this postseason is that like, to me, you can make really good arguments. I mean, I think like without like getting like, I, I think maybe Utah in the West um, that, and the argument for Utah is that like, we've got 72 games worth of data. Um, you know, they've been really good. And, and, but look, they've got their questions too. You know, um, Donovan Mitchell needs to come back. He needs to prove that he's healthy. They don't really have a chance without him. But that offense has been great. Um, we know, obviously, the defensive sort of pedigree, and, and, like, this is such a weird season, so why not have kind of like a weird team be, be, be the, the, the crew that represents it? I think it's Brooklyn in the East. Um, you know, I, I, I really truly believe in talent, which is why I'm tempted to say the Lakers, honestly, is that you just kind of roll with whoever's got the most talent. Um, but uh, it's really – the West in particular is – I mean, you can make, in my in my mind, like pretty much compelling arguments for, you know, the Suns, yeah, the Clippers. Um, it's hard to see Denver um, with the Jamal Murray injury. But, I mean, I could talk myself into Portland. Um, you know, I could talk myself into to Luka Doncic getting hot for, you know, four weeks and, and carrying a team. Um, I could talk myself into Lakers figuring it out. Uh, I'm sure I, I, I missed somebody, but it's – so the Western Conference to me it's as it's as level as it's been in a long time, and that's um, that's why I'm I'm really looking forward to the next month or so, just because I think we'll finally get answers to questions that I've had since you know probably January. I think it's all reasonable. And before you go, Dan, the weekend was not only about seeding for the playoffs; it was also the newest class being inducted into the Basketball Hall of yeah. Fame. You were in Kentucky for that. Obviously, Kobe Bryant was inducted, but was not, and but was a huge part of the weekend without being there. What do you make of how that was handled? Um, I thought it was, I thought it was well done. You, you know, it, it's, you know, being in the room, um, while that happened, um, you, you know, you, you do, uh, you hear it in Kevin Garnett. Like I heard it really heard it with Tamika catching and, and really heard it with Tim Duncan. As you hear people talk about, like, it's their life's work, you know, and, and, and Jim, you're a hall of famer. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's proud. It's your life's work that, that you're kind of digesting and, and, and you're reflecting upon. And, um, you know, there was a lot of emotion in that, I, I think because 
I mean, it was a little awkward um, and, you know, sad because you're sad that Kobe Bryant is, is not here for for those things. You're sad that he wasn't there to give a speech, um, you know, whether it was to go like full full MJ and just like just nuke like anybody who's ever been um, sort of an enemy or anything like that or, um, you know, to kind of be gregarious and, and self-facing. Like, I, I don't know. I think you would have done well with it. Um, but it, but it's you, you know you want that moment to be a celebration and and, and obviously because of the tragedy, um, you, you know which it, for most uh, like for me at least you know having covered it um, most of the time like that tragedy has felt like kind of a long time ago. Um, it felt very recent. I would say this weekend still like kind of seeing everybody together and seeing kind of how that wound is still so open for so many people. Um, that kind of made it difficult to navigate. But but it was a nice event and. Um, you know, and, and and I think having never covered one before, um, it was cool to be in the room. Um, I could watch Tim Duncan um, talk to, to about Greg Popovich forever. Like that was great. And, and like I said, I thought Tamika Catchings was awesome. It, it was nice.